The Warsaw Radio Mast was the world's tallest structure until its collapse on August 8, 1991. It is the second tallest structure ever built, being surpassed as tallest by the Burj Khalifa, completed in 2010. The mast, which was designed by Jan Polak, was 646.38 meters tall. Its construction, started in July 1970, was completed on May 18, 1974, and its transmitter entered regular service on July 22 of that year. It was located in Konstantina Cube W, Garbin, Poland, and was used by Warsaw Radio Television for longwave radio broadcasting on a frequency of AMLW 227 kHz before February 1, 1988 and AMLW 225 kHz afterwards. Its base was 115.2 meters above sea level. Because a voltage potential of 120 kV existed between the mast and ground, it stood on a 2 meters high insulator. It operated as a mast radiator, so its height was chosen in order to function as a half-wavelength antenna at its broadcasting frequency. The signals from its 2 MW transmitters could be received across essentially the entire globe. Its weight was debated, Polish sources claim 420 tons. Construction The Warsaw Radio Mast was a guide steel lattice mast of equilateral triangular cross-section, with a face width of 4.8 meters. The vertical steel tubes forming the vertices of the mast had a diameter of 245 mm. The thickness of the walls of these tubes varied between 8 and 34 mm depending on height. The mast consisted of 86 elements, each of which had a length of 7.5 m. The mast had three arrays of guy wires, each attached to the mast at five levels, 121.78 m. 256.78 meters, 369.28 meters, 481.78 meters, and 594.28 meters above ground. Each guy was fixed on a separate anchor block at the ground and was 50 millimeters in diameter. To prevent the guy wires from interfering with the radio transmissions, the guys were insulated at regular intervals. The weight of guys and insulators used to anchor the mast was 80 metric tons. An elevator and separate protected ladders were installed in the interior of the mast to facilitate access to the various mast components, including the aircraft warning lamps. The elevator had a maximum speed of 0.35 meters per second and required 30 minutes for a trip from the bottom of the structure to the top. In the lower half of the mast, there was a vertical steel tube, attached to the mast's outer structure with large insulators. This tube was grounded at the bottom, and connected electrically to the mast structure by an adjustable metal bar at a height of 328.68 meters when the tower transmitted on 227 kHz long wave and at a height of 334.18 meters 334.18 m when it switched to 225 kHz on February 1, 1988. This technique allowed adjusting the impedance of the mast for the transmitter and worked by applying a DC ground at a point of low radio frequency voltage, to conduct static charge to ground without diminishing the radio energy. Static electrical charge can build up to high values, even at times of no thunderstorm activity, when such tall structures are insulated from ground. Use of this technique provides better lightning protection than using just a spark gap at the mast base as it is standard at most mast radiators insulated against ground. The mast was equipped in 16 levels with air traffic warning lights with 200 watts power. Their height above ground was 49.18 meters, 94.18 meters, 121.78 meters, 161.68 meters, 206.68 meters, 256.78 meters. 296.68 meters, 341.68 meters, 369.28 meters, 409.18 meters, 454.18 meters, 481.78 meters, 521.68 meters, 566.68 meters, 594.28 meters, and 634.18 meters. At the top there was a flashing beacon consisting of two lamps with 1000 watts power. 
a special overhead radio frequency transmission line was used to transfer the signal from the transmitter building to the mast. The transmitter building, situated at 52 a degree 22 a euro squared 22.9 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 48 a euro squared 25 a euro cubed e, had a volume of 17,000 cubic meters and was approximately 600 meters from the mast. The transmitter consisted of two 1,000 kilowatt units built by Brown Bovary and C. An atomic clock was used to generate the transmission frequency in order to provide a very accurate, stable signal source which could be used as a frequency standard by anyone within signal range. The station, which had an area of 65 hectares, also had a 76 meters lattice tower of rectangular cross section close to the transmitter building. At 52 a degree 22 a euro squared 23.6 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 48 a euro squared 24.4 a euro cubed e. This tower was used to provide a radio link for program feeds from the studio, which ran from the Palace of Culture and Science, Warsaw via a radio relay tower at Ija. To supply power to the station a 110 kilovolts substation was built. The substation was over-engineered due to the strategic importance of the station as Poland's central transmitter. Although the power consumption of the transmitting station was large, the substation was capable of supplying much more than was required. Six small towers were erected around the periphery of the station's grounds in order to support aircraft warning lamps where the guy ropes were located. They are situated at 52 a degree 22 a euro squared 17.4 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 48 a euro squared 9.7 a euro cubed e, 52 a degree 21 a euro squared 53.8 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 48 a euro squared 6.3 a euro cubed e, 52 a degree 21 a euro squared 57.1 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 47 a euro squared 48 a euro cubed e. 52. A degree 21 a euro squared 55.8 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 48 a euro squared 27.6 a euro cubed e. 52 a degree 22 a euro squared 6.1 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 48 a euro squared 24.3 a euro cubed e. And 52 a degree 22 a euro squared 8.1 a euro cubed n 19 a degree 47 a euro squared 54.4 a euro cubed e. The official name of the facility was Radio Fonicio Radek Nadorci W Constantinoi, Radio Centrum Nadorc W Constantinoi or Warsawska Radio Storsha Central na W Garbini. It broadcast Polsky Radio's program I, approximately 10 years after completion of the mast, inspections revealed structural damage caused by wind-induced oscillations at the mast, the backstage insulators and the guys. Repair work was very difficult and replacement of the mast by a stronger construction of the same height was considered. However, this was not realized, as a result of Poland's economic situation. In 1988 the mast was repainted, but this could not be done to the desired extent, as there was not enough paint available. Collapse On August 8, 1991 at 16 o'clock UTC a catastrophic failure caused by an error in exchanging the guy wires on the highest stock, led to the collapse of the mast. The mast first bent and then snapped at roughly half its height. The helix building and the transmitter building were not damaged. An investigating committee determined the blame lay with most hostile Zebs, which built and maintained the mast. The construction coordinator and the chief of the most hostile division that built the mast were accused of causing the collapse. They were sentenced to two and a half and two years in prison, respectively. Since the collapse of the Warsaw radio mast, the tallest structure in Poland has been the FM radio and TV transmission mast at Ulstin Pierczeo, measuring 360 meters. Replacement After the collapse of the radio mast at Konstantina Cube W, the Polish broadcasting company used the old Rasin transmitter with its 335 meters mast near Warsaw which had been used since 1978 for daytime transmissions of a second Polish broadcasting service program in the long wave range on the frequency AMLW 198 kHz, for transmissions on AMLW 225 kHz with a power of 500 kW. 
it is not possible to transmit from Racine on AMLW 198 kHz per 1515 meters and 225 kHz per 1333 meters simultaneously, so the transmissions on the second long wave frequency AMLW 198 kHz had to be discontinued until either a second long wave broadcasting transmitting facility was built in Poland or a special frequency switch, which would allow transmissions on both frequencies was installed at the Racin transmitter. The latter, simpler solution would have decreased the effectiveness and reliability of both transmitters and was therefore found unacceptable. Because the Polish long-wave transmitters are of special importance to Polish people abroad, as early as April 1992 the Polish government planned to rebuild the mast at Konstantina Cube W. In September 1995 the Polish government was set to rebuild the mast. Although refurbishment of the old basements, which could be reused, had already started, the rebuilding of the mast was cancelled due to protests by local residents, who claimed that radiation from the mast was a health hazard. While the accuracy of these claims has not been verified, a new site for the transmitter was sought. Several other locations were considered, but due to the continuing resistance of nearby inhabitants, planned mast height and transmitter range were both greatly reduced and an old military site just southeast of Selekwajorski was chosen. There, a new long-wave transmission facility was built in 1998-99, with a transmitter of 1200 kW output power for the frequency AMLW 225 kHz. This facility, which was inaugurated on September 4, 1999, uses one 330 meters and one 289 meter grounded up ed masts as aerials. After the inauguration of the transmitter at Selek Kwajorski, the transmitter at Rasin was again used for transmitting on the frequency AMLW 198 kHz for the program Radio Parliament. Current state, except for the mast and the radio frequency transmission line that led to it, Nearly all components of the facility remain in place, and used and slowly deteriorating. Replicas, Eldorado do Sul RBS Radio Mast, a mast radiator in Eldorado do Sul, Brazil, is a nearly perfect replica of Warsaw Radio Mast with 35.5% of its height. See also, Radio Masts and Towers, List of Masts, List of Catastrophic Collapses of Broadcast Masts and Towers, List of tallest buildings and structures in the world, List of famous transmission sites, KVLY TV Mast, KXJB TV Mast, KXTV KOVR Tower, BURJ Khalifa. References External links, Should the Aerial Mast be rebuilt? Radio Warsaw Transmission Tower at Strukshiri, Diagrams of the Warsaw Mast and Directional Radio Tower Constantino, Pictures showing current state of former site, set of photographs from 2010 for Panoramio Google Earth service. Construction drawing, feeder arrangement, map of site, collection of construction drawings, site on geo portal.